Okay, so Remy and I just got to Stoughton State Park. We are going to be spending two nights here, but it may just be one. Tonight's supposed to get pretty chilly. Um, they said high 20s when I checked the weather, but I got here and it's 27 degrees. It doesn't feel that bad, but we'll see what happens when the sun goes down. And then tomorrow night, supposed to get to mid-teens. Um, but luckily these are just walk-in campsites, about half a mile walk-in. So if I do need to be a big baby and bail, I can do that for tomorrow night. Um, it's all supposed to start snowing on Sunday morning. So we'll see. Gonna test uh, my survival, or pseudo survival skills. And um, yeah, try to enjoy the weekend. Especially this is probably one of the last camping weekends I'll be able to do um, before ski season starts. Just Remy checking out her campsite. Rem, come here, buddy. Come here. Good boy. Apparently, Remy couldn't wait to get in his bed. Oh, and he's got a nice little eye buggy. Ew, gross! Hey, buddy. How's it going? You doing okay? You like the tent? All right, so before the sun sets, it just started setting. I just wanted to do what I'm having for dinner tonight. I am trying out a new company for food. So it's Heather's Choice. They're actually based out of Alaska. And I started with them um, buying these things called packaroons, where they're just basically macaroons. Very delicious, lots of different flavors. Though my favorite is, you might have guessed it, the espresso flavor. Um, but they have uh, lots of different flavors and you can order online, but they also make meals. So tonight we are gonna try the chicken mole with rice. So let you know if it tastes delicious. Okay, so the only thing I noticed about these meals is this one in particular said to let it sit for 20 minutes, which is kind of a long time and then add one minute for every thousand feet above sea level. So I am at about, I think 8,500. So that'd be like 30 minutes in this bag. Um, it's probably been about 15. I'm gonna try it anyways. So we'll see how it goes. Oh, and I did bring some extra hot sauce. There we go. Just in case it doesn't have enough flavor. First bite, hopefully it's not disgusting. Mmm. Wow. That's good. And it's actually already spicy, so I don't even think I'm gonna need my hot sauce. And definitely something I couldn't give her a mean. Good. A plus Heather's choice. Okay, so we've got this tent set up. I still have to get my sleeping pad in there, but for tonight I have a foam pad, my inflatable sleeping pad, which has an R value of 3.2. I've got my 25 degree bag, and then I brought an extra rumple um, down blanket just in case, um, but also discovered that my sleeping bag has at the foot box a place for hand warmers. So in case I do get cold, I did bring extra hand warmers and so that's actually a good thing for my feet in case they get cold. So. so I actually decided to try the hot water bottle method tonight, heating up my sleeping bag. So I am heating up water right now. I've got this about halfway full. Um, this is just a Hydro Pack 2 liter pack, which is actually really nice to put in Remy's pack. I'm gonna use it for my sleeping bag tonight. and. You're supposedly not supposed to fill it with more than 140 degree Fahrenheit water. So I build some water, let it cool down, um, and then I'm gonna go stick it in my sleeping bag. Good morning. We survived the night. It actually got 
below 20 degrees last night when I checked it and then at about 1 a.m. I got really hot in my sleeping bag and then checked the temp and it said at about 45. So somehow this cold front came through and then pretty much warmed everything up. So I was perfectly fine last night um, sleeping. It got pretty windy, not too bad, especially for Colorado, but Remy started moving around. Remy, come on, come here. Come here, bud. So Remy started moving around and when he was actually moving around in the tent and his fur was hitting the side walls of the tent, um, there must have been a lot of static electricity in the air because you could see the little sparks just come off of him as he was moving around. And then I was trying to get him to turn around to get into his sleeping bag and then my hands were creating the static electricity. So it was pretty cool to see that because I'd never seen that at night. But then thinking of all the fires that are happening right now and the fire danger, um, definitely can see why in certain areas you, you don't have campfires or anything like that. In this particular state park, you actually can't have campfires year round. So only thing that's allowed at the campsite is um, gas uh, or gas powered enclosed uh, fuel systems. So that's nice. But anyways, um, it was a good night. I watched a good movie and then just completely passed out. First cup of coffee of the morning. Delicious. Oh, I have a new little hack I made for my jet boil. So I basically just took those old koozies that's been sitting in your pantry forever and I cut them up. Just, I think I used two of them um, for the bottom and then two around the side. And I just duct taped them together to create a little insulating thing for my mug. So this is the one that goes just in the cup in the bottom of the jet boil. So actually when I make my oatmeal in this, it'll be really nice. And then my other Sea to Summit mug, I didn't extend all the way, but look at how perfectly it just fits right in there. It's so cute. Coffee, round two. All right, moving on to breakfast. What do we have this morning? We have our wonderful Next Mile Meals Denver omelet, which has since been renamed to something else because apparently you can't call it Denver if it's not made in Denver. So, um, but it's just eggs, veggies, cheese, um, lots of flavor. So this is one of my favorite. I do add some sun-dried tomatoes, which I put in a separate little one ounce package. So I'll split this today and put half of that egg mix in a another mylar bag for tomorrow just because this is a little bit too much for me to eat on my own but i found these on amazon like 100 for about 20 dollars so they'll come in handy and they keep the smells away too so that's actually what my coffee's in just for storage so i can help practice some good bear safety with keeping the smells at bay oh the other thing i also have is my kodiak cakes oatmeal and the flavor today is maple and brown sugar sun-dried tomatoes. That did not work like I wanted it to. Take two. Sun-dried tomatoes. Right, that's what it looks like fully cooked. Smells delicious. So Remy looks at my breakfast. And then he looks at his breakfast. Hey, Rem. What do you think? Which breakfast is better? Hey, buddy. Hey, buddy. Morning, Remy. The black squirrel is back. And Remy patiently awaits his arrival. Okay, we're just about to head out um, on our hike for the day. This is gonna be our long one. We are gonna try the Payne Creek or Payne Gulch Trail. I've seen it two different, or seen two different names for it. We appear to be having technical difficulties. Trying this again. So we're heading out onto the Payne Creek Trail in the, it's the entrance to the Buffalo Creek Wilderness of Pike National Forest. Um, Pike is actually one of the few national forests open right now just due to the wild. We appear to be having technical difficulties. Okay, round three. 
So we're headed out to the Payne Creek Trail, number 637, and that leads to the Buffalo, not Buffalo, sorry, that was last weekend, the Lost Creek Wilderness Area. And the Lost Creek Wilderness Area is part of the Pike National Forest, which around the Front Range here is one of the few national forests that's actually open right now. Um, they've closed most of them off just due to the wildfire and resources. So we're gonna check this out. Um, hiking project listed at about nine miles one way. So we'll see how far we get before we have to turn back. Um, and then 24 to 2,500 feet of elevation gain. So it should be a very good climb, but slow and steady. Um, and then just getting a feel for what the Lost Creek Wilderness is like. And Remy, hey bud. Remy's got his um, high vis, high vis vest on today, just because there is hunting um, and shooting within the public lands. So. We don't want anyone to think that he's a fox out there. So that's why we wear our high-vis vest. You're at the Pink Creek McGurdy Trailhead. There's actually not a sign here. Um, it's at the end of the drive, so maybe get a picture on the way out, but sun has definitely come out, so I think it'll be a good hike. Um, def have my sunscreen on, and parking lot is pretty full. There's probably like 15 cars here. Um, it was a little bit of a rough drive in that Google took me. I saw an easier way out where I don't have to put in my Jeep into four wheel low, but, Anyways, we'll stop for a lunch break and see how things are going. Here we go. I love this life. Yes, I do. It gets even better when I'm spinning it with you. The lonely stars are all jealous, it's true. Cause they got nobody to hold like I So we are officially at the um, Pain Gulch Brookside Trailhead Split and we are going to take the Pain Gulch. So far, pretty uneventful hike. 1.75 miles in from the trailhead to the split. If we're looking to do it, no water sources, not even anyone really on the trail. You can probably see why. So hopefully this next part of the trail will be a event fell in terms of taking pictures and everything, not seeing something like a mountain lion. But anyways, here we go. Looks like we have to sign a permit to go into the wilderness area. Um, one per person, zero for dogs. And so it begins the hardest part of our climb. I think we've got about a thousand feet in elevation to gain in the next mile or so. So should be a doozy. But one more mile of this nonsense. I love this life. Besides the bright golden leaves, apparently you can tell these are aspen because they have eyes. 